Hey guys, we're out here off Miami. About to put up the kites. We got a uh, north wind, a little bit of rain. When the wind's blowing, you know, 18 to 20 like this, we use the holy kite so the wind can kind of get through the kite. If you have a solid, you know, kite on a windy day like this, it's hard to bring it in. You know, you can get it out, but it's hard to bring it in. So this lets the wind go through, it dissipates the wind. There we go. The next is we put out our long, middle, and short. So I got the long bait. We got our speed ring. We got our cork. We got our weight, which helps keep the bait down in the water on a windy day. Our swivel clipped onto a 15 foot leader with a circle hook. So we have our first clip ready, right here. Outrigger clip. Release clip. Clip it in. Okay, now this is gonna go away from the boat after we put our bait on. When a fish bites, we're gonna feed it through this speed ring. Once we engage the drag, it's gonna pop out. When the fish comes tight, and all of a sudden you're fighting the fish from the rod, and you're disengaged from the actual kite. Okay, so this is the first clip. We got a floss mark here, which holds it in place. We used to use swivels, which would hold it in place. But the, the, the floss marks are a lot easier on your hands, a lot smoother going on the reel, and this is gonna keep this going out. So we get the hook now, which is a circle hook. It's about a 5-0 or 6-0, depending on what you're doing, what kind of bait you're using. A little circle hook, thin wire, don't need a lot. Next, we have a needle with a rubber band with an open eye. So what we do is we put the rubber band on the open eye. We hook it on through here. And the next is to get a bait. And we're gonna actually put this needle through the back of the bait. What we're gonna do is we take the needle, put it through their back, right through, pull the rubber band through, come back around, pop the needle off, comes right off, do a couple twists, and then go through the back, through the front. Okay, now this goggle eye is going to go out. Offshore is a little rough today, guys, as you can see. And we're going to start popping this guy out. See the cork going away? I got the clicker on. This drags are aggressive. We're going to go out with that. So basically, the bait is now going away from the boat. The cork will kind of show you where it is. We use the corks really to see where the baits are. Now I'm waiting for my second clip and my mark, which is actually a floss mark, to show up. Now that's there, okay? As you can see, we take it, bring it right back over. Have the speed ring here once again. The cork, the weight, the swivel, and a 15-foot leader. Again, clip it in. And that's the line going away like this. When we get it, when we get a bite, we're gonna drop back, let it go through, let it go through, let it go through. As soon as we feel like the fish has it, we engage the drag lever, and then we then it's gonna snap out when you get the tension, just like that. And then you're fighting the fish from the rod. So this is strictly to keep it away from the boat and suspend the baits, basically with no leader in the water. One of the most efficient ways to fish. So I'm gonna get a little bit away from the boat before I put the bait on. Okay, got that guy in the water here. And now we're going to use a thread fin herring. Again, we go through the back, right here, through with a rubber band. couple twists. Danny, if you could close that bait, well, it would be awesome. And then we come right through the back. So now we have bait number two. Pop that guy out. Start riding it out. And now we have two baits on the way out. All right, now we've got the third bait. We're going to clip on. 
We've got the long, the middle. One's actually going out a little bit. We're going to clip on the third bait again. we got the clip here. Release clip. Pop that on. Same thing, a little smaller weight because it's, it's a little uh, closer to the boat. Doesn't have that much drag on it. All the baits, all the reels are in free school right now. So they're all going out simultaneously. And lock that up. Lock that up. All right, now we're gonna get our third bait on. Same thing. This one is from the bait pen. You can tell he's a little more, a little more rubbery when they put him in. When you keep them in the bait pen and they eat a lot in there, they tend to get a little different look to them. Back under. Throw that guy out. Bring him back into position. So now we've got three baits. You can see down the line. I'm going to reel them up so you can see them kind of in line. You got the long, which is far back. You got the middle, obviously in the middle, and then you got the short right here. So they're suspended right now with very little leader in the water because we only have 15 foot leaders. I'm gonna send these back maybe a tiny. Let's try that on that. What we do now is we basically stand here the entire day watching the bait and we trim them. We pray and we, we try to trim them up, basically meaning we're trying to keep the corks maybe 10 to 12 feet off the water and then we know we have about two to three feet of leader in the water, sometimes only a foot of leader in the water and when a fish comes down the rip or they come down the edge, they can see these fish struggling on the surface because they're being held up by their backs or dangling. So the night, one of the nice things about this is very, li very little leader in the water number one. Number two, struggling live bait, fresh, fresh live bait. Light wire, 5060 circle hooks. And basically very fresh baits. I mean, that's, that's the key. The fish will come down and let's say, for instance, it eats my short. I can drop back on the short, I'll pick it up, put my thumb on the spool, put it in free spool, let them eat it. But you don't want to let them eat, you don't want to start dropping back until you know they've eaten it because a lot of a lot of times when you first start doing this, a lot of guys have a tendency to drop back when they think the fish is almost there and they see the fish. And what happens is the fish goes to chase it and there's all that free line in the water and they get wrapped around the bill, which is called wrapped up. And once they get wrapped up, they usually get spooked, they freak out, they jump and they take off and the hook never gets them. So if I hook up right now, for instance, someone says to me, hey Peter, you're getting a bite on the middle, on the middle bait. I would take the rod, pick it up, go around the front, come around here, put it in a free spool, and wait to see the fish actually eat the bait. Okay? And right now my cork's starting, it's a little low, so I'll even crank it up a little bit and prepare for it. The barracuda for the first bite off the kite. He ate the middle thread fin. Take it out. Yeah. Look at that guy, hooks right in the corner. Right in the corner. Look, about a 15-pound barracuda. Look at those teeth. And you see they got hooked right in the corner there. Look at that. Danny's got one on right now. He's got a mahi on. How big, Danny? Hey, that's around like seven, eight pounds. Worth gaffing, huh? Yeah, a little bit gaffer for sure. All right, that's good to know. Right now we leader it up. He's gonna wind to the tip. He's kind of a swinger. He's gonna wind to the tip. Step back. He got right, right, in the, right in the cranium. Nice shot. Yeah, man. Nice job. That's Beautiful right, dolphin. That's off the kite. Nice job, nice man. Shot. Woo! So when you're flying these kites, and you saw earlier how I put use the uh, three clips. We got three baits on each side with the speed rings hooked into the clips. Um, the distance between the clips can vary. There's no perfect science to it. Um, sometimes you can do 70 feet, 80 feet, 90 feet, even 100 feet in between baits. They do floss loops or you can tie um, a swivel, a barrel swivel from one side to the other and then the, uh, then the clip will stop at that swivel or like I said you could use a floss mark like we're doing here which is a lot easier on the fingers. Um, so basically you want to separate the baits. 
and some days the fish are swimming very close together. We like to keep the baits, you know, close. We get multiple bites. Other days we spread it out. We want to cover a lot of territory. You know, we might have one bait in 200 feet, and then the next bait will be in it, you know, 180, and then the next one might be in 150 if you spread them out really far, so you cover a lot of ground. Uh, today we have them about 80 to 100 feet apart, and then to the kite, um, you can do 7,500 feet, 150. It doesn't. It doesn't really matter. You want the kites flying kind of low, if possible. The lesser the drop back when it pops out of the kite clip down to the water and the line you got to take up, the better because it's a much more direct connection when you have a lot less line to reel up. So that those are kind of the uh, some of the little little things that you need to pay attention to. Again, it's not an exact science. Bottom line is you got to keep your eyes on your baits. You got to make sure you use fresh bait. We use light leader. We use 40 to 50 pound fluorocarbon. Sometimes we'll even use 30 fluorocarbon leaders with small 5.0, 6.0 circle hooks, light wire, and you want to make sure that you know you're fishing a nice area. There he goes. There he goes. There he goes. Cute dolphin. I knew it. Coming right at us. Great yeah, reeled it in right up. Right up under the kite bait, reel the other one in the air, probably gonna get another bite on that kite bait. There it goes. See now, we got one in the holder. Let's see if we get another bite out of this guy. Got a double header. Popped right out perfectly. Look at that, another mahi coming in over the side. You wanna take a look? catch pretty much anything. Today's a lot of mahi, got barracuda sharks, waiting on a sailfish bite. I'm gonna drop this one back a little bit, just in case. Let's see. Take a wrap on it, if he comes off, it's okay. Another one in the box. So what I'm doing now is just swimming the baits in. We've had an awesome day. We caught mahi, we caught sharks, we caught barracuda, and uh, it's been a great day out here.